In lesson 1.3, students will observe salt, they'll dissolve some in water, and then allow the water to evaporate and see that the salt comes back as tiny crystals. The idea is for students to appreciate that common phenomena like dissolving and evaporation all are based on tiny particles of atoms and molecules. You and students can discuss how salt is made up of positive and negative ions, that water has positive and negative parts, that the water interacts with the salt and pulls it apart, and then when the water evaporates, the salt comes back together. Next, you can show students a magnified picture of salt and point out that each salt granule is a tiny cube, and the reason for that is that all the way down at the tiny, tiny atomic level, the salt crystal is made up of a positive sodium ion and negative chloride ions. The fact that they have opposite positive and negative charge means that they're attracted to each other and they hold together, and that's what keeps salt in a little crystal. What students will do is put some salt in a cup and swirl, and just in a short period of time, less than a minute or so, the salt will dissolve. The students probably have seen this many times, but the question is, why did that happen? How does that work? Where did the salt go? We want kids to understand that there's something about the interaction between the water molecules and the tiny granules of salt that caused it to dissolve in the water. So we have an animation that can help kids understand this. Here's the salt in the cup, and we pour some water in, and the idea is what's going on in there. So we can go in very closely and show that Sodium is a positive ion, chloride is a negative ion, and that water also has positive and negative areas. Water is a polar molecule. When water comes down and interacts with salt, the positive part of the water interacts with the negative chloride ion, and the negative part of the water interacts with the positive sodium until the salt is completely dissolved in the water. So students leave the salt water out for a couple of days, and after a while they begin to see tiny crystals being formed, and the crystals should be pretty cubic like they were to begin with. As the water leaves, the ions become more and more concentrated, and they begin to come back together and join like they were before. You can use this animation. You can use an animation to help students understand what's happening here. So here's the dish of water. And if we look very closely, the water molecules are evaporating. And as they evaporate, the concentration of the sodium and chloride ions increases and the charges bring them closer together and the attractions hold them together and they recrystallize as salt. And that's why students see those tiny salt crystals in their dish after the evaporation takes place. So the evaporation of the water molecules was a state change from a liquid to a gas. Now, you could take another opportunity to talk about a different type of state change. You can do this yourself. If you have two graduated cylinders that are plastic, you can put 90 mils of water in one and put it in the freezer and it should freeze up to about 98 milliliters, and then you can compare it. You can show students ice actually takes up more space than the same volume of water, and you can show that in an animation also. Here we show a sample of water that's 50 milliliters and water molecules moving around uh, in the liquid state, and now we're going to take this graduated cylinder and put it in a freezer, the water molecules slow down and arrange themselves into a crystal and they're more spread out than they were as liquid water. So this is instead of 50 milliliters you're at about maybe 53 milliliters or 54. So here we show that ice is less dense than water. It's more spread out even though you have the same number of molecules. The NGSS standard 5 PS11 says develop a model to describe that matter is made of particles too small to be seen. This lesson basically supports the standard by doing exactly that in the context of dissolving, evaporation, and recrystallization. If you look at the foundation boxes, the students develop a model to describe a phenomena. In this case, they look at the interaction between water molecules 
and the ions of sodium chloride models of both to understand the phenomena. For disciplinary core ideas, this idea of structure and properties of matter, that matter of any type can be subdivided into particles too small to be seen. Students look at the particles of water and of salt, and even though the salt's dissolved in the water, it's still there, and it can be recovered by evaporation. Cross-cutting concepts, scale, proportion, and quantity, that natural objects exist from the very small to the immensely large. Here we're looking at the extremely small scale of ions and water molecules. So thanks for listening and watching, and good luck with the lesson.